Hello and welcome to the Jam Podcast. My name is Sean Voitov and I am joined by Ben Stanley and Anastasia Burlakova. And we will be talking about um, the Holocaust, specifically um, the lessons from Auschwitz sessions that the Holocaust Educational Trust uh, provides and uh, you two did, right? Uh, yeah, in yeah. October last year. Yeah. So. Before I go on to um, you know, what you uh, guys learned and what you did uh, with uh, the Lessons from Auschwitz uh, sessions, uh, why, why did you choose to do this? Well, um, I, I had always sort of researched the Holocaust and, and looked into it. However, um, I've never really had a personal experience with the Holocaust. Um, in 2018, I went to Sachsenhausen, which is a, another concentration camp. Yeah. And the only time that I uh, had had an encounter physically, um, having seen the atrocities committed, and um, I just wanted a more personal and engaged experience with the Holocaust, and I wanted to also share what I had learned and and educate others. So that's why I decided to to enrol in the in the in the setup. Right, and um, what about uh, you, Anastasia? <clears throat> yeah, um, for me, I think there is a bit of like family history involved because me being like an Eastern European from like the mainland in Europe, obviously, like the atrocities committed by Nazis are, like spread throughout the entire continent, and it kind of directly affected me and my family, and I kind of always felt like I really need to pay respect to the victims, like my great grandma. She was in Buchenwald concentration camp, yeah, and I just really wanted to kind of come closer to that side of history and just learn more about the victims because, you know, uh, they make it look like they're just numbers, where it was actually people with stories and, you know, dreams and hopes, which is really sad, and I just wanted to get involved with because of that. Right. Um, what did you uh, do as part of your sessions with... Uh lessons from Auschwitz? <clears throat> so I think we've had two online uh, events before we actually went on to, was it two or one? Overall we had two online seminars. Yeah, so before we actually went to, to visit Auschwitz, we had one online event, which is, was like kind of like an introduction. We've learned about the history of like anti-Semitism, like in ancient times up to now. And yeah, we just kind of thought, kind of background information on everything before actually going on to visiting. Yeah, they um, they, they really looked into the, the history of anti-Semitism and uh, in addition to this we, we were informed to research ourselves case studies of uh, pre-war Jewish life and this really sort of personified the victims which I think was a, a re- really important to the Holocaust Education Trust. I'm not sure if that was a feature of your experience there. Um, but they really wanted to bring a human face to those who, who, who suffered under Nazi persecution. And for example, the, uh, we looked up uh, just a, a regular football team from uh, Lithuania, and it, that really sort of resonated with myself because that's an activity I partake in. And it really just made you think these are ordinary people who were, who were needlessly killed. So. Yeah, I, I mean, for context, um has been sort of uh, implied that I also uh, did the lesson from Auschwitz, but uh, I did the year before you guys. Um, and of course, uh, this year you guys uh, actually went to Auschwitz. Um, when I did it, uh, we were given a uh, like a cardboard VR headset, and we had to put our phone in and we looked at Auschwitz that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's obviously totally different to like go in yeah. there and actually feeling for it. So. Uh, what? How? How? Talk me through going to Auschwitz. Well, where did you go? Um, what led up to it? How were you feeling? And ultimately, what happened while you were there? Obviously, the entire day was the, the entire day was just so gloomy. It was just like a really like depressing atmosphere. Even going there, uh, our first stop was actually not Auschwitz one. We first stopped at Auschwitz which is obviously the city uh, in which Auschwitz is, I think. And we just, uh, we kind of got, you know, uh, 
introduced to the area and the history of Oshuechim because I think prior to World War II, Oshuechim was like the center of Jewish activity in like Poland. It was just like very busy. Like I think the market street was very busy as well. Just lots of Jewish businesses, uh, big Jewish population, and yeah, it was just really beautiful. And we kind of, you know, they taught us that, showed us pictures, and also taught us um, family stories of people that lived in like those houses and things like that. Yeah, um, that was that was the first location of three which we visited, and uh, already that sort of set the tone for how challenging the day would be because you you think of what then later happens this rich historic Jewish city and then the Nazis annex it and, and thousands, tens of thousands are, uh, are just forced to leave and, and, uh, and are persecuted by the Nazis and it, it was it was very strange to just stand where where so much so much horror had taken place and then this would only become more challenging as we then um, took the coach to Auschwitz one, which was uh, which was incredibly difficult, and you you uh, you you know you get to the entrance and you see the infamous sign of of Arbeit uh, free, uh, you know what what makes you free, and uh, it I can't really find the words to to describe what what we saw that day, but it, it was all it was all very difficult. Yeah, especially they showed us pictures of <coughs> people living, uh, like they leaving their houses in Rosh and you can see all of them taking all of their belongings with them, and just and you kind of think about the fact that they told them that they will be back, like their houses will be there, like just take your belongings with you, we will relocate it, relocate you into a new place, and then you know you will return to your homes. When in reality, most of those people were like put on trains straight to Auschwitz. It was just really horrific, and especially after that, we went to Auschwitz one straight away. And just imagining what all those people went through, just yeah, it was really horrible, and it was a very difficult feeling all the way through. Um, I mean, yeah, it's I've I, like I've never been to pers personally to Auschwitz. Um, my I. I've got a ancestral link to Auschwitz, though I've got my uh, one of my cousin's uh, mothers went to Auschwitz, and um, I, like when you left Auschwitz, one how how do you? And I, this might be a bit of a of a cliche question, but how do you feel like your view on things changed? Uh, did you feel changed after? even Auschwitz one. I want, I want to know your thoughts when you left it. I, I don't think you can truly picture the events of the Holocaust um, having not been to Auschwitz. I, I, I really do think it, it, it changes uh, your, your perception of, of everything really. It, it, I, I, not in my life have I seen something like that. You. You're walking around and you see different these different accommodations, so-called, um, and it's just and just to know you're standing in a place where systematic killing or you know genocide took place. And I, I, I would strongly advise those to to go out and visit Auschwitz um, and you know be incredibly respectful and. And, and know that it's not, you know, it's not tourist attraction. It's it's there to be respected. Um, but uh, yeah, I would strongly recommend people to go out there and to really just just engage with with the feelings that those who suffered there experienced, and to and to reflect on on what's happened. Um, I I presume it wasn't just you two though who were visiting Ashford. You were part of a group yeah. um, with a. Uh, with a guide, um, who who else was in your group out of interest? Uh, it was like I think uh, kind of colleges all throughout uh, was it North London. Uh, we met a lot of people also like interested in you know learning about events that took place in Auschwitz, and it was 
the people were really nice. Obviously, the day wasn't so nice. Yeah. And yeah, and kind of visiting Auschwitz really changes your mindset because when you think about it in like the grand scheme of events, it it didn't happen lo- that long ago. Mm. It's like radios already existed. Like there was a communication. It wasn't that long ago, and there are still some survivors. Exactly, uh, there are still like survivors walking this earth experiencing like that experience that and it's just so horrible because as soon as you visit Auschwitz you just kind of changes your perception of things because before that you think oh we learned about it in like school in like textbooks like we saw pictures but here you can see the place and it is just yeah you know you guys talk quite a lot about your previous uh, education uh, with the Holocaust um, after being to Auschwitz and being with the uh, Lessons from Auschwitz uh, sessions, um, how would you uh, describe your uh, previous education before coming to college in the Holocaust then? Uh, to be honest, I, I, I don't think it really covered nearly enough as it should have in, in terms of my education. Um, I only really recall learning about the Holocaust in, in late primary school and then very, very briefly outline you know the events that took place who the nazis were and that the jews were persecuted but they never later on in education they never really went into depth into into the personal loss and 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 then attempting to bring humanity to the situation i whenever i've learned about the holocaust it it has only really been facts and figures and it's they've never really beyond as i say primary school touched on it so I, I think it really needs to be uh, a part of history that's brought into the curriculum mm. uh, what about you Anna? yeah my experience is the same in my secondary school I don't remember my teacher like teaching or was that much it was just kind of you know part of the program about learning about like Weimar Germany and then you know the beginnings of World War II but it was never like we never fully learned anything about it but it was always, for me personally, I always learned it like about Holocaust, like everything I know about it, I learned it by myself, like it, through like research and just through personal interest. Especially because in my family we, we pay like big respects to the victims because obviously it's connected to kind of our family as well. And yeah, uh, I think. In like, for example, in Eastern Europe, it was it's a bigger part of like education, but I think in here in Britain it's not that big. But yeah, I think that should be changed because obviously it's really important to know about Holocaust and yeah, so that thing will never happen again. Yeah, and um, you know, I guess this all sort of ties into um, you know just not not just modern education, but also um, modern anti-Semitism. Because, uh, like you said, we want to make sure that nothing really hap- nothing happens like this again uh, to anyone. And, um, y- you know, I, I, actually, I don't know. Um, did, did you guys uh, speak to a survivor? Um, I, I, I did in my... Yeah, I don't know. What about you guys? What uh, Who did you speak to and how... What did you learn? We we had an online talk with a survivor. Uh, we spoke to Janine Weber, who uh, currently lives in the UK. Um, she has uh, lots of lovely grandchildren, and uh, she she spoke incredibly well and articulately. And I mean, some of the some of the things she said are, are just completely unfathomable. Um, and I think. It is so important to, to hear from survivors. I, you can do all the research in the world you, you, you can possibly do regarding the Holocaust, but to hear a first-hand account is so important in understanding what people went through and, and the challenges they faced. I mean, Janine faced all sorts within her early life. Um, her, uh, her, her native Poland at the time was invaded by by both the Nazis and the USSR and, and with Ukrainian collaborators thousands of Jews were, 
were killed imminently and um, she constantly had to move from place to place, change mm -hmm. her identity. Yeah, had to pretend that she was like a Catholic, so people would say she should be so she would find like some sort of refuge. And it was just a really horrible story and it like really made me want to cry every time she just mentioned more and more details. But the way she spoke about it was just it, she just spoke about it so like like calmly and I was like it's such a horrible thing and it's like to her she went through so much that now she's able to you know be kind of like just speak calmly about it and to me it was just such an atrocious thing that she had to go through uh, I, I mean um, that it's uh, really brave what they have to do to sort of decades later still retell that story. Yeah, talk about it because yeah. sometimes I uh, you know, think about Janine and I'm just thinking how I would behave in this sort of situation and it's just I can't imagine that because every time you kind of have to go back to the things you went through and you know talk through it and just you know think about all the things that happened and you know your family members that are not here with you anymore and yeah it really like shows you and um, obviously we guys are well are one of the few uh, well, one of the last generations who will be able to hear uh, first hand an account from a survivor uh, of the Holocaust um, and so that makes you know education of the Holocaust even more uh, important because we're starting to lose um, a lot of uh, the people who actually were there to dedicated a lot of their life to the education of the Holocaust. Um, what do you think are the main, uh, the, the most important things when uh, educating about the Holocaust? Um, I think one of the most important things that Holocaust Educational Trust kind of taught us was uh, to talk about, first of all, to talk about the victims as, you know, people that had, you know, faces, yeah, names and faces, but also about the perpetrators, that they were not monsters, they were just ordinary people that did an ordinary thing at an unordinary time, because to them, it was a respectful job, you know, it was just something like working at Auschwitz to them was just something normal, and people respected that at the time. And, you know, even without the collaborators, it wouldn't have happened, you know, but people would still collaborate with the Nazis because they viewed it, anti-Semitism, as something ordinary and as something normal. You know, to us, those people might look like monsters, but to them, they were just ordinary people. Yeah, um, but why, I guess, why, why is it so um, s striking? To find to to hear a bunch of people say actually the Nazis were just ordinary people, like why, why do you think that is? Well, I think it signifies how quickly hate can spread and how well that's very scary in itself and how just how something of the magnitude of the Holocaust could feasibly well, unfortunately happen again because of people spreading hate and, and scapegoating minorities and. And just have, you know possessing bigoted views. So I think understanding the rationale behind the people that carried out the events of the Holocaust is, is hugely, hugely important into into stopping something as awful as that ever happening again. So I, I, I really do think education is, is crucial in moving forward. And, and um, how how is learning about uh, Auschwitz and the Holocaust? Um, how is that uh, linked to your uh, understanding of modern anti-Semitism? It really all stems from like those ancient times. I really don't know why it's still happening, but for some reason it's still there. We can see it in the media up to this day. But I think the most important thing that I learned was how during you know those times it, you know the Jewish hate went from just 
kind of religious hate into like a race kind of issue that you know Nazis turned it into like eugenics all of those things to actually like prove that you know Jewish people were of a different race that was inferior to you know, like the Aryan race all of that and it's just in my eyes is just so like pathetic because there is no difference between us but they actually try to come up with like pseudoscience to come up with like prove to kind of explain why they did what they did. How would you like to add anything to that? Well, I, I think anti-Semitism is, is very, very prevalent still in, in the present day and I, I think even if you look almost you know, to, at the top of society, uh, people like Kanye West spewing uh, horrendous things to say about, about the Jewish community and I think a lot of that stems from People still associate Jew the, you know, the Jews with with negative stereotypes. So, as we have learned about through the Holocaust, educational trusts that have been around for, for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. And I, I, I think, as, as as we've mentioned before, that education is the way forward. Um, yeah. I, thank you very much for doing this. This is obviously. Uh, uh, it's a it's a difficult topic to talk about. Um, I know when I did my next steps, that was quite difficult for me to talk about it. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you very much for doing it. Um, just want to, on a final note, get to know your thoughts about how what what do you want to do for the future? Because um, how how do you want to continue uh, spreading Holocaust education? Um. I individually or as a group? Well, I, I think certainly carrying out activities such as this is, is very important in reaching a large audience and, and sharing our experiences and encouraging people to research the Holocaust, look at their own views and, 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 and just educate people, I suppose. Um, so definitely doing podcasts, writing articles, all these sort of things. Uh, aligning with our with our next steps through the Holocaust Education Trust, uh, we believe are vitally important to, to carry out. Um, any other thoughts? On this um, yeah, I think you know, just going on talks and you know, encouraging people to visit those talks and at the same time, kind of contacting the survivors because we were taught that they're always willing to share their testimonies and you know they're just really willing to share what they've been through with people that are interested I think it just it should become a bigger part of education even from like a younger age I think people are scared that they don't want to traumatize children but thinking about it the Nazis killed so many children during that time and it's important for us as teenagers and for uh, younger kids to understand horrors that a human can commit. Thank, thank you very much, both of you. Um, and that uh, wraps up this uh, podcast of the of uh, the uh, of the jam. Um, and uh, if you are uh, interested in finding out more about uh, the lessons from Auschwitz sessions. Uh, I think we all uh, greatly encourage you to go and look at the Holocaust Educational Trust website um, and also um, other Holocaust uh, Museum's websites where you can get quite a lot of good information. Uh, thank you very much. I've been Sean Voitov. I've been Ben Stanley. Anastasia Vodolkova. And I look forward to seeing you the next time.